How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds and welcome back to another video. So I thought I would share a quick update on the new setup about a month later after everything has been established and up and running. At this point there is plenty of plant growth still, to the point that some of these plants are even growing well out of the water. The moss is still looking vibrant and very healthy. The pond weed stems and leaves have also grown out quite nicely as well, and the terrestrial plants are also continuing to thrive. However, some leaves have started to yellow, but the snails continue to do their job and clean up the algae and other debris. But that being said, I still have to keep up with maintenance on my own as well, because there is also other algae growth still blooming in certain areas. And, as usual, the eastern newts are always active, and also very eager for food. I noticed that there were also quite a few comments on the last video about the eastern newt larva. There were some people who were wondering what happened to it, and here it is. This shot here is about a month and one week after the enclosure was established. And you'll notice that the larva is starting to get the coloration that is normally associated with the eft stage, which is a clear signal that it might be starting to change to the terrestrial stage very soon. And at that point, I would have to remove it from this enclosure and put it in its very own completely separate terrestrial enclosure. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how this enclosure turned out. The biggest challenge is definitely keeping the algae in check, Maybe I should add some more ghost shrimp to the tank, and maybe some other types of snails. But the overall placement of the plants themselves, and the types of plants used, I'm actually really happy with, and even the frog bit has established itself and come back stronger, even acting as a surface for the newts to actually crawl up on whenever they want to come out of the water. But, due to the rate of growth of the frog bit, I do have to occasionally scale it back and take some out, keeping it contained to one area of the enclosure. Fast forward one more week, and from this shot here, you can actually see that the changes to that larva are drastic just from the previous week. The gills have shrunk and the tail fin has also become much less paddle-like, showing that this newt is nearing the stage of the terrestrial eft. So I'm going to have to start making preparations for its new enclosure very soon. Fortunately, I already have the substrate ready for use. While a lot of viewers of my channel may know this, there's actually quite a lot of people that I still talk to that don't know that the eastern newt leads a complex life. And they're quite surprised when I tell them that very soon, this little fella here won't be able to swim and could potentially drown in the water once it reaches its terrestrial life stage. Its body just simply won't be built for the aquatic lifestyle that it used to lead. And so, only a few days after I had just recorded that last shot, that little eastern newt was ready to emerge from the water and we found it actually crawling on the glass, so we had to take action immediately and set up the new enclosure right away. Luckily, I had an empty 10 gallon tank in hand, plus the substrate that I already had, and some dried oak leaves as well. It's a very simple setup that retains moisture through the substrate, but also provides some hiding places through the oak leaves, which gives the newt a sense of security. This little newt is very, very tiny, and it is going to be a challenge to raise it. I'm starting off by culturing some springtails and dwarf white isopods, but I really want to get my hands on some white worms. The problem is with white worms, it's so hot in the season right now that it's almost impossible to get them shipped out and guarantee that they arrive alive. And unfortunately, due to how small this animal is, it's hard to go to most pet stores and actually get something that is an appropriate size. So it's definitely going to take some work, but it's going to be well worth it. And that's the update. So I'm going to wrap up the video here. And if you all enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, 
comment down below and please subscribe. Your support is very much appreciated. And I hope you'll all join me next time for another adventure into the Salamander Wilds.